Hi guys, it's Neil from RatingHorses.com. Uh, today I want to um, delve a little bit deeper into the uh, the data on our daily spreadsheets, and obviously there's numerous ways you can use the data to help you in your daily selection process. But me personally, I'm going to show you the sort of things that I'm looking for and hopefully that will give you um, a few pointers moving forwards in how you can use the, the ratings um, potentially to make you good profits. Um, well, if, without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first um, race on the race card on Tuesday the 20th of uh, August. Here is the 140 at Brighton. Now, if you know anything about horse racing, you know that Brighton is a bit of a quirky track. You know, some horses can go there with good recent form, turn up at Brighton and, and run really poorly. It's um, very quirky. It's, it's of a similar ilk to Chester and Epsom, those sort of places. So ideally, you're probably looking for horses that have run um, fairly well at Brighton. Um, but let me just show you how I would quickly uh, evaluate, uh, evaluate a race and see if there was any potential um, bet. Well, as you can see, there's five runners going to post. Um, with the main ratings, there are three that are all very, very tightly rated. Glamorous Rocket with 18, Big Time Maybe with 18, and Gepardo with 17. Pink Iceberg just has a rating of 8 and the Lace Maker just 4. Um, so at first glance you'd be thinking well I can probably dismiss those bottom two because they've got um, uh, quite poor ratings. The R1 scores are very similar as are the R2. So there's, you know, there's not much that stands clear out of those top three there. Uh, glamorous rocket big time maybe and Gepardo. recent form again is pretty similar last time out glamorous rocket finished second big time maybe also finished second and Gepard Gepardo will we'll call it Gepardo. Um, that also finished second all three horses are also aged four years of age Obviously, there's some discrepancies in the weight, which we'll have a look at that uh, in, in more detail uh, shortly. Um, all three different trainers, all with run-to-form figures, virtually the same. Or maybe Michael Atwater um, is a little bit lower than uh, the other two with uh, an RTF of 31. Remember, the RTF is a score given by the Racing Post and what they are saying there is Christopher Mason's runners in the last 14 days have run to form what they believe would be good form 50% um, of the time. Michael Atwater's uh, horses in the last 14 days, according to the Racing Post, have run to form 31% of the time. Okay, so that's a little bit... Um, below the other two, um, obviously three. <coughs> excuse me, three different jockeys. However, Kieran Fallon, who is um, a good jockey, uh, is taking five pound off the back of Big Time, maybe. So that's something to remember. If we look at the OF strategy rating and rank, they're all ranked one, two, three, and again, there's not an awful lot between the rating. So again, it looks like the three. There's not much to pick between the three as we go. Big time, maybe as a horse form, as the best horse form out the three. Um, the trainer scores we've already gone through. Uh, so we, let's go to the speed ranking and speed ranking the top speed rank is big time maybe uh, has the top speed ranking with Gepardo second and glamorous rocket third power rating remember the power rating is a score given to each horse 
um, taking into account all of the data of each race of each horse in each race so the power rating takes into account the speed figures the latest form our algorithm OF strategy uh, the R1 R2 scores maybe any potential um, advantage or disadvantage with the draw there's no draw bias uh, here in this race there's only five runners um, but the power ratings have glamorous rocket first and a big time maybe second um, again not that much between the power rate right? nothing that really stands out anyway the hour odds column which is a column that we give to try and advise you and push you in the direction of getting that edge on the bookmaker trying to find value you know value value is the key it's forecasting that really glamorous rocket should be five to two or bigger big time maybe seven to two or, or, or around seven to two or bigger and um, value for Gepardo according to our stats should be uh, around four to one just under four to what oh, excuse me um so although there's not much between the three i'm probably tending to lean towards a glamorous rocket or big time maybe so i want to uh, see if there's anything that can separate those two with the official um, ratings well as we can see here glamorous rocket is potentially the best horse um, out of the the three um, going off 68 last time out in fact each of the three horses are going off exactly the same mark as they did um, last time out um, they're both going off the same um, marks as i say Glamorous Rocket has dropped 11 pounds in the last six runs. Big Time Maybe has dropped 10 pounds in its last six runs. And Gepardo has dropped just the four pounds in the last six runs. Um, if we look at Gepardo, we can see that it's been run off 63, 65, 66, 63. There's not been much movement there by the handicapper and he's not managed to get his his, uh, his head in front. He's been there or thereabouts. Maybe he's one of those horses that doesn't like to get his head in front. Um, so that would probably slightly put me off Gepardo. If we look at big time, maybe. His last two runs have both been off 60. Uh, we can see there he's finished third and second. Um... And he's off 60 again today so he could be knocking on the door he has got his head in front in the in the past as we can see there uh glamorous rocket as the biggest weight of all of the the three at uh, nine stone ten um has dropped off in the weights uh, three runs ago he was off 75 when he finished ninth then he was off 70 and he finished fifth and then he was dropped in the weights further last time out going off at 68 and he finished second and he's off 68 today so yeah it looks like it's going to be between glamorous rocket and big time maybe um to me um but that kieran fallon taking another five pounds off for big time maybe is uh is something that yeah let's look at the 14 bats um we can see that well, none of the trainers have done particularly well um, especially Mike Atwater no wins from 16 runners in the last 14 days Christopher Mason two winners from his last two runs in the last 14 days um, Jockey Stas again not great three wins from uh, 39 rides and four wins from 49 rides so both have an 8 and strike rate um the the pl profit loss is slightly better for glamorous rocket so looking at the stats i would tend to think it's going to be between glamorous rocket and big time maybe both have dropped in the weights considerably over the last six runs um both off the same mark as last time out uh, power rating of one and two OF strategy one and two both on the same ratings there's probably not an awful lot be going between them but as I say this Kieran Fallon takes five pounds off so listen I probably wouldn't have a bet 
if I was to have a bet, I maybe he would I may well be looking to do one of two things, and that would be if the value was there to back both at level stakes, if one of them wins, we lock in a profit. Or if you really got to pin me down and, and, and pick one horse, I think I'd probably pick uh, big time maybe um, because very, very similar data to Glamorous Rocky Bokir, who is a very capable uh, young jockey, he's taken an ad additional five pounds off the horse's back. So let's have a look to see how the race panned out. Let's have a look at time form, the 140 at Brighton. And pretty much as we thought, they finished first and second. Uh, big time maybe won at 13 to 8 and glamorous rocket at 5 to 2. 13 to 8, I, I'm, I'm not aware if there was any money for this horse. Um, but as I say, at 13 to 8, that works out, I think, at uh, around 2.62. And as you can see, our forecast odds to reflect value is offering big time maybe at around seven to two. So don't let that put you off. As I say, we're only trying to find you an edge, trying to offer you value. Um, if there was something you really, really seriously fancied, you know, don't let that column of our odds put you off. But it's there to help you and guide you to reflect you what we think um, the true odd would be. Um, Moving down the race cards, um, what I would say, if I could give you a pointer, is always try and concentrate on races where there's much data. Races such as this following race at Brighton is a novice uh, stakes race. Um, there's a horse here that's not even run before. Of the horses that I've run before, most of them have only run once or twice. Um, there's not an awful lot of data to go on. There's more than enough for us to calculate a rating, of course. Um, but I tend to steer clear from horses, uh, well, meetings and races that do not have much data. I would much prefer to concentrate on uh, group races or handicap races where all horses have run numerous times and have got data. You will find. Um, that you will get better results um, concentrating on sort of races but of course don't forget we've got the system builder you know you might decide you might be one of these people that really like the maiden auction stakes or the two-year-old or three-year-old races um, you know so but again the system builder may be something you want to try and build a little mini system around those sort of races but that is just a quick example of how I personally would use the ratings, um, taking into account all the data. Um, I hope that's been um, helpful to you. Thank you.